Yo, people, what's going on? It's the Kitty G on EGTV, and we're back again with another video. I hope you guys are well. Hope you guys are doing your thing. Let's get the show started. The Kitty G on EGTV. Bang. Yo, I got my guy dealing with me here. We're doing our thing. You guys already know what it is, the Kitty G on EGTV. Today, we're going to be talking about transfers. We're going to be talking about outgoings, incomings, and Stan Kroenke giving the green light to spend more of that money. Looks like Arsenal is going to be spending a lot of money this window. Looks like we're, we might be getting a bunch of players, and Arsenal news today is busy. Talk to me, Dylan. How you feeling, man? How you doing? Welcome back, Dylan. You doing well? I'm good. I'm good. A little bit, uh, a little bit dusty. I had a '70s party last night, as you can tell um, by the mustache. I, I don't know if you know what dusty means to me, but dusty means like something else. <laughs> what does dusty mean? In dusty is like you know when you you know when you have like cobwebs downstairs. Them ones. Oh no! See, like dusty, like in Australia, is like you know you're not you're not feeling the best. Okay, you learn something yeah. new every day, guys. You can uh, the link to the link to Dylan's YouTube channel is also in the description. The link to my channel is in the description. Also, let me know how you guys are feeling. We'll try to have a very interactive show today, talking to you guys uh, uh, throughout the throughout the show. But we got a lot for you. Uh, where do we begin? Should we begin with outgoings and then and then we'll move on to incoings? Yeah, yeah. Go go go. Outgoings first, yeah, for sure. Outgoings first because there are a couple outgoings people. For Pichi Romano speaking, you got other people speaking. But yeah, people in the comment section, if you could please comment, let me know if, if the comment section is working. We have one here, but I, but we got about 30 of you guys in the chat already, and we have yet to see one comment. So I just wanted to make sure it wasn't robots. <laughs> but yeah, and big up to everyone watching on TikTok. Um, Guedes incoming, some people are saying. We got to talk about this. We got to talk about this. Is he incoming? Is he not incoming? We're going to get to it. But first things first, let's get to Lucas Torreira. So... Lucas Pereira is going to be headed somewhere. Where is it going to be? We'll find out right now. A report saying from Fabrizio Romano, if I'm not mistaken, I read the reports just a little bit earlier, that Lucas Pereira will be headed to Galatasaray. Yes. Let me put it, let me put it on the screen for you guys to see. Lucas Pereira to Galatasaray is getting closer than ever before. Officially confirmed, uh, Dries Mertens and Lucas Terrera. Dries Mertens as well. I guess he's yeah. old now. Yeah, yeah. Dries Mertens, uh, the Instagram uh, uh, Instagram king. If you've seen his Instagram, you know what I mean. He's the funniest guy on Instagram. Um, then you got Lucas Terrera officially signing his documents, and he will be a player. They both are in Istanbul tonight, and Lucas Terrera will be joining until 2025 for six to seven million plus add-ons. Lucas Terrera is officially, officially, from Fabrizio Romano, Lucas Terrera is officially a Galatasaray player. How do you feel, my friend? You know, I, at first, you know, I really did love Terrera. I think, like, he went sort of through a bad patch, you know, when Uno was trying to play him as a number 10. And I, you know, I thought he could be, like, maybe like that Granite Jacker, like that deep-lying player for us. But, I think his attitude is just the worst. And I think that's what's obviously just let him down throughout this. Like he's just piss poor. Like even, you know, coming back, I thought maybe give him a chance to, to give like that defensive, you know, midfield depth, you know, in the team. But, you know, he just, he just seems like a prick now. So um, I'm glad he's gone now. Move on and hopefully bring someone else fresh and new in. So I'm happy he's gone. But do, do you think like the, what do you think about the price? <laughs> Uh, six to seven million. That's the best we can get, man. That's the best we can get at this moment in time. We're not going to get much better than that. Um, just to show you, he is at the airport. This is Lucas Carrera at the airport with, um, oh, I don't want to play the audio, obviously. So let's just not play the audio, but. Yeah, better cover that being. Lucas Carrera is jumping off the plane. Literally. I don't know how they get this footage. So this is apparently this is Lucas Carrera. Headed off the plane. Is that Terrera? He's too tall to be Terrera. That's his girlfriend, probably. No, he's the one she's holding him. <laughs> You're awesome. <laughs> where, where is Terrera? I don't see Terrera. Do you guys it's see It's a two-minute video, so it could be anywhere. How long is this shit? That's, that's Mertens right there. How long is this video? Where is Terrera, man? 
Oh, there's there Terrell. There's Terrell. Was that him? Yeah, it was, yeah. That's Terrell right there. Yeah, there he is. Five foot five and everything. At least he's taller than Martinez, Lissandro Martinez. Anyways, there you go. So that's the video of Lucas Torreira in Italy. It's going I'm, to be- I'm look. I'm glad he's gone. Hopefully, we can put that money towards um, midfielder or something like that because we need it. Boom. So Lucas Torreira done and dusted. No question about it. Um, it's good to see. I'm happy that I'm happy that. What we're about um I'm happy Pablo Mari? What? What about Pablo Mari? Isn't he going to that um, Monzo or something I, like that? You you beat me to the punch, bro. You beat me to the punch. Uh, we're gonna talk about Pablo Mari right now. Uh, let's get let's get into Pablo Mari because, in my opinion, Pablo Mari should be should be another player that we should get uh, some sort of money for. We should get something for Pablo Mari. We shouldn't be giving him away for. Well, didn't we pay ten? Uh, we paid two. Didn't we? Am I, I thought it was. I thought no. He played a certain amount of games and we had to pay ten mil, didn't we? Or was it less? Uh, I don't know. I think that's why we didn't uh, want to pay. But for Fabrizio Romano, once again, what did he say about Pablo Mari? Let's see what he had to say about Pablo Mari. And people in the comment section, big up to the people in the comment section saying sell holding next. That would be nice to sell holding, but I don't know if we're going to sell holding. I think we might hold on to holding for a little bit longer. Um, Dylan, what about you? Holding. I don't think he's going anywhere. Do you agree? I don't think he's going anywhere, but I would sell him for sure. hundred percent. Okay. I think he's been at the club like long enough and he's an English talent. So hopefully you can get at least 20 mil for him. Yeah. So moving on to Pablo Mari, um, if you could just read this quickly as, I'm, as I'll go through some of the comments myself. Sure, sure, sure. Arsenal have received a new bid for Pablo Mari. Hellas Verona, Hellas Verona are offering a permanent deal. Monza pushing for a loan with an obligation to buy um, if they stay in the Serie A next season. Decision expected, but Pablo Mari 100% leaving. Yes, Arsenal. Well, obviously, you want the the money up front. That's what you want. You don't want an obligation, but only if they stay in what like the city are. That's not confirmed. So, yeah, you got to take the Verona one for sure. But yeah, I guess so it's up to the player, isn't it? Yeah. So someone here is saying Nelson next. That's not going to happen. It's hard to get a good price for when players are coming out publicly. You reckon Reese is going to leave? One second. He's just, he's right though. It's hard to get money for players who openly said they want to leave. Um, it's true. Yeah. Someone said he's in the toilet crying. <laughs> uh, Arsenal fans are real FBI agents. That was not an Arsenal page. That was a Galatasaray page. Uh, originally, that tweeted that out, and an Arsenal page retweeted it. Um, I love Ter- I loved Terrera when we signed him. I will never forget the goal in the North London derby. I yes, wish I him all the best in the future. Definitely. I definitely agree there. Um, what about Reese Nelson? Um, Reese Nelson, what, what's going on with Nelson? Not that I'm not, I've seen nothing on Nelson whatsoever. I think Reese Nelson is going to be staying around, don't you? I don't know. He was loaned out last season. What's he going to do this season? They're going to just sit on the bench because you got that Marquinhos as well, potentially to come in as well. Pepe, you know, Pepe needs game time as well if he's not going to be sold. So, you know, you got Reese, Pepe, Saka, Marquinhos. That's a cluster of four on that right side, really. I haven't I haven't actually seen any articles of saying he uh, Reese Nelson's uh leaving. I don't Was he think... on the bench uh, a couple of days ago? Was he on the bench when we played? The last article written about him potentially leaving was uh was in was in uh June uh twenty six uh June no, July 29th said um, Arsenal make a decision on Reese Nelson. Reese Nelson is probably set to stay. So the update that we got on Reese Nelson is when he went on the tour to Orlando, that they that they kept him as a part of uh, the tour. And the fact that we still haven't been able to bring in a winger, we we're going to give him a little bit mm. of an opportunity to see if he can prove prove us uh, prove to us that he is worth the 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 money so let's just see i i I, i'm on football london right now and they're saying arsenal are preparing for the u.s tour and and reese nelson is going to be part of it so just reading this article right here quickly so i don't think reese nelson's going anywhere but that's just me i think well like alistair's saying they like nelson can play europa it's true it's true and we got all those early cup games as well um that he can play so and i think arteta always liked reese nelson also to be honest, like if you remember when he first came in, one of I the like first players, one of the players he always spoke about was Arsenal make a decision on Reese Nelson transfer. I think I think in the long run that Reese Nelson might be sold eventually, but at this moment in time, I don't think they have any uh, sellers. So keep him until January. Try to use him in the Europa League, and 
if yeah, we don't so get well, yeah. game time, you can get yeah. rid of him in January. Get rid of him in or January. Or six month loan obligation or something. Yeah. yeah, get rid of him in January if if it doesn't work out. Um moving on to moving on to the next couple comments. Um, yeah, he can play in the Europa. Um now outgoings. What is this title about? People are asking, what is this title about? Two incoming transfers. What the Cronkies have given a green light. What what the hell is going on? How how have the Cronkies given a green light? Where is this money coming from? Let's not be accountants, people. Leave that to the real accountants, right? But I will tell you guys, uh, two more incoming transfers are rumored to be coming into Arsenal Football Club. And I think that's enough to guarantee us at least top four. Do you agree? I think so. I think so, yeah. If we get, a, like I, I said this to you literally yesterday, and I, I sort of based my top four assumptions on us getting two more people, which I thought we would. Um, so like I said, a midfielder, and a goal-scoring winger. So if that's the case of Yuri Tillmans and then a Diaby, man, that that's a fantastic window. It's an exceptional window. Ten out of ten. There you go. Ten out of ten. If we get if we get those two, there's a lot of rumors though. There is a lot of rumors that we need to we need to keep an eye out on because with with the with the rumors of with the rumors of incomings we get rumored and linked to new players that could potentially income to Arsenal that we haven't really thought about or spoken about too often. Like uh, one of the links that we're currently linked to, he's also linked to West Ham. He's quite, he's linked to West Ham quite a bit. Uh, not, not West Ham, Wolves. He's heavily linked to Wolves. He's a Portuguese player. We've been linked to him before. He's former PSG and Benfica winger. Guedes. Now with, with him, there's a lot of negatives and positives. So where do we begin? Where do we begin? Um, let me just uh, do the timestamp. You tell me what you think about him so far before before I uh, I tell everybody what I think. Well, look, I think Guedes, a couple of seasons ago, I would have obviously contemplated that transfer. But I think like looking at it now, I don't think it's probably like the right move for us, to be honest. And if you look at the fact of the clubs like, let's say, West Ham or Wolves or whatever are linked with him. If that's that sort of standard of club, then that's probably a player that you don't want to get. You know what I mean? Like, on contrast, like a DRB is going to be linked with a higher caliber of club. So, I don't know. I, I just think that maybe Guedes isn't the, the right person. Like, it, well, what's the, the price for him and stuff like that? Let me just let me just show you some of the tweets and what they say. Um, people in the comment section, let me know what you think about Guedes. Um First, you have uh, good old Eduardo Hagen saying, uh, uh, Guedes uh, to Arsenal, according to unconfirmed reports from Spain. Keep an eye, eye close. Then you have Dean James reporting that Marca are apparently saying it's it, indicating that Guedes uh, is moving to Arsenal. Everything is appearing that Guedes is moving to Arsenal, apparently. Then you have another report saying that Napoli, this is back in June, Napoli, Arsenal, Inter have been in contact with uh, Guedes. That is interesting. Obviously, we have another report. That was a tweet from, these are like old. This is from 2016, actually. Yeah. Yeah. So there is some old tweets. And then there's this. Everything is indicating that Guedes is coming to Arsenal. There's obviously the Torreira stuff we already spoke about. The new new Galatasaray players. Fabrizio Romano also had a tweet about um, Guedes, uh, Guedes. Where is it? It's right here. He's saying something about Guedes confirmed is set to leave uh, Valencia. The club is told they will receive a huge uh, proposal for Guedes from a Premier League club. That is what the reports are saying. Now, that Premier League club could be Arsenal. But at the same time, ladies and gentlemen, I don't want to get your hopes up too much. Uh, Your Wagwan, my man, Saliba, is getting bought for, for, for sure. Yo, Chelsea, oh my G, you be quiet, man. You're not, he's not, uh, Saliba's not going nowhere, man. Saliba is not going nowhere. He wouldn't lower his standards to Chelsea. Yeah, he, you guys, you guys have to pay, you guys have to pay double for what we paid for Saliba to get Fafana, who's the worst player. Don't even, bloody, what's in left back? They just overpaid for him 67 million or whatever. By the way, reports just came out at 1130 that this whole Guedes thing is BS. And he's going to Wolves. What? Well, the Portuguese link at Wolves, it makes sense to me. Uh, Alistair just said Portuguese. Wolves now? Yeah, Wolves, All yeah. of a sudden, he's headed to Wolves. Yeah, Guedes is headed to Wolves, was referred to Wolves. So look at that. Two hours ago, 
English club have offered money for, uh, and Wolves is the English club. There you go. So he's Makes headed. Sense, to, you know, he's headed Portuguese, to Wolves. I see. He's headed to Wolves. All that, all that, all that Arsenal links just for him to be signing for Wolves. I think, I think that's what it does. Guedes to Wolves. So maybe Pedro Neto is now on his way. Could that Ooh, mean? Pedro? Yeah. Could that mean Pedro Neto is coming to Arsenal? Listen, that... after his performance last night, like he was a bit dodgy. What? What is he dodgy about? He was. He was. He was fantastic in mine. I don't know. I just felt like his, his decision making was poor. Okay, what do you think about uh, Pedro Neto to Arsenal? I think it would cost too much. Potentially, yeah, he he would cost a lot of money. But have we actually yeah. been linked, have we actually been linked to Pedro Neto? People, no. no, no, have we been linked to Pedro Neto? Like really and truly, where has anyone seen a link to Pedro Neto besides? Uh, uh, people saying, oh, now that they're signing this guy, could that be a boost for us to get Pedro Neto? You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I, I'm I very know. much questioning the validity of these uh, these rumors. But at this moment in time, it doesn't look like there's an actual Pedro Neto. Well, part look, I, I, I must say, like, it seems that everyone Arsenal has gone for so far um, we've done our business really quick and swiftly and there's been less rumors, you know, like, you know, like back in the day, or even last season, you know, you link with back someone for well, back in the day, you look at like, um, what's his name? Mm-hmm. Dushan Vlahovic, you know, linked for six months, rumors, whole month focusing. And we didn't get him where, you know, Jesus was just there and done. You hear the rumor it was finished. Zinchenko, same done. The Vieira just came in. I didn't see anything about that. So, you know, I, I assume if we're going to get a player, it's going to be on the same Standard to what we've been could doing that now. Player, just buying it. Could that player be Musa Diaby? That makes sense. Think about it. I'm hearing rumors that Stan Kroenke has given the green light. You know what? Let me just show you. Let me just show you what I'm what I'm hearing. I'm hearing that Stan Kroenke has given the green light for Arsenal to pursue a Bayer Leverkusen winger, Musa Diaby, before the end of the transfer window to be completing their attack. So, could this be... Fake news or real news? Because we've been linked to this guy, I think, a month and a half ago. And I'm very much excited by this transfer. If we couldn't get Rafinha, he would be my second choice. Who I mean, does he yeah, bench? At the time when... What? Who does he bench? He benches Saka. and he uh, No, he doesn't bench Saka. He benches Martinelli and ESR. And Saka starts on the left. I... Yeah, Saka. He can also he can also play on the left. He's left footed, so you're not yeah, going to yeah. get a lot of goals from the left from him if he's playing on the left. But he can he can create from the left. With, with he has a really good left foot. He's heavily left footed. Musa Diaby doesn't score ridiculous amount of goals, but he still it still gets a decent amount of goals over there in the Bundesliga. The transition from the Bundesliga is going to be quite difficult because a lot of people have struggled to transition from the Bundesliga. But I would take Musa Diaby. I think Musa Diaby is one of my preferred options in the wing position for Arsenal. And I think 55 million, that's what that's what they would be asking for. At least that's what they were asking when Newcastle were interested in him. 55 uh, isn't too bad. You think when we paid bloody... And he would look, and he looks pretty good bad. already in an Arsenal kit, don't you think? It this is, is nice. pissing you off, doesn't it? Edits. I'm telling you, Arsenal have the best edit, editors in the world. Okay, so yeah, here's another report here saying... Um, Kroenke, uh, uh, yeah, Football Insider is the is the original source of this report. Now, let's be honest. Football Insider is a 50-50 uh, uh, reporting thing. Half the time, some of the stuff that they get right, half the time, some of the stuff is sensationalized. But we'll have to see. We'll have to see. Also, he's a, forget, is, he's a, a right point. winger, isn't he? This is a good point. Uh, this is a good point. He, uh, with the five substitutions, he, uh, uh, him coming off the bench... I don't think we sign him for him coming off the bench for fifty-five million, though. I don't think Saka is going to go to Man City, Georgie. Ego, no can we finally say Kulusevski is better than Saka? If you Come guys, on. Want to... he's got to do it more than nineteen games, man. Jesus Christ, man! He just came in. Yeah, Saka to Man City next summer. Why? Yeah. Why is it always a Leicester fan trying trying to trying to chime in and and say some madness, bro? George, I feel bad for you, bro. You're going to have a tough season this season. Your boys are your boys are, are looking bad. Did they lose today? They didn't play today, did they? Oh, they play tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah, tomorrow. Yeah. They play tomorrow. Um, 
Diaby is clear of Guedes, definitely. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. What's the what's the poll result right now? Seventy eight percent are saying Musa Diaby in comparison yeah. to Guedes. That's 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 how it should be. But guys, the thing is, I just don't I just don't want to overpay for him either. Hundred percent. Romero is clear of Saliba, best center back. Uh, can we block this guy? What? What did he say? Romero clear of Saliba. Get a get a grip, brother. Get a grip. Mm. 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 Romero I'm... is so overhyped. He's horrible. Today, today, Van Dyke. He's, not, Van Dyke, he's not even better than Gabriel. Last night, uh, 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 what do you call it? Saliba Mitch took uh, Virgil Van Dyke's uh, aura, and he couldn't do anything about it. <laughs> you see, Van Dyke got, got bodied by 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 freaking um, Mitrovic. Yeah. It was absolutely mad. But Liverpool yo, look like shambles. But yo, let's go to the Tillemans update. Tillman's update is mad. The, the, the Tillman's update is mad. It's such a roller coaster of emotions. Oh my God. Okay, so let me just give you guys a quick update on Tillman's. This is the most craziest update. Bro, I actually couldn't believe my eyes. So, one second, they say Tillman's boost. Arsenal have been boosted because Leicester City are looking like they're going to now sign Awar as the replacement for Tillman's. Great news. Leicester have, Leicester have their Tillman's replacement. We don't have to. We don't have to stress. They've already signed a player who can replace Tillemans, and now it's looking like the deal could get done. Right? Everything's perfect. Right? So let's just let's just look at this. So where does it say? Yep. Here we here we go. Six uh, sixteen hours ago reported, but who reported it? Who reported this? Um, somebody reported it. I don't know what their name is. Um, never heard of this company before. Have you ever heard of Lessor? No, no, maybe a French company, maybe a French outlet. But let me just show you what it says. It says here that Tillemans will leave before the window is closed. Leicester are looking at a war to replace him, right? So that is what the source is saying. Now, all guns and roses, be for them. all beautiful things, right? But then things take a turn for the worst. Things take a turn for the worst. Another club is now interested in, in, in the services of Yuri Tillemans to the point where this is the most tier ones of tier ones for West Ham. The biggest tier one of tier ones for West Ham has come out and said Yuri Tillemans is a target for West Ham. Now, I'm not saying we're going to lose Yuri Tillemans to West Ham. I am not saying for one second that we are going to lose Yuri Tillemans to West Ham. But to hear that he is 100% going to move this window, and then to hear that West Ham are targeting him after knowing that West Ham have just signed uh, Onana, and now they could potentially sign Tillemans, they will have Onana, Tillemans, Declan Rice, and Suchek. Let's be honest. Thomas Partey is a better midfielder than all of those guys, but they have a better, they have a better second, third, fourth... <laughs> <laughs> than than everything else that we might have after Odegaard and, and Partey, so I don't know, man. We're, we're West Ham are building a decent team, man. Are you worried that West Ham could get Tillemans? Mm, not too worried. I think if you know if Arsenal genuinely wanted him as a target, then obviously he would choose Arsenal. You know what I mean? Like no one's going to go to West Ham over Arsenal mm. because you know they they get the occasional European football and. Struggle, you know, they don't play the best football either. Oh, Onana's going to Everton. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Spurs detective, you're right. The Spurs detective is right. He is not going to uh, uh West Ham, he is going to Everton. The deal is done. Yo, that's a good deal for Everton, you know. It's a really good deal for Everton. Everton, got which one, the Onana the keeper? No, Onana the, the midfielder, six foot four from oh. now. I, I, I'm I'm kind of, I'm quite upset we missed out on Onana, man. Thirty-three million pounds. Around. Would you pay thirty-three million pounds for a backup to Partey? Mm, it's no different than Spurs paying fifty-five, sixty million for a backup to Kane. So, at the end of the day, you need you need good squad depth. Partey is obviously a player that um, gets a lot of injuries, so we we should have someone of a high caliber to slot in, just like every other team does. Liverpool does, City does, Chelsea. Chelsea's bench, like, compared to their first team, looked great last night as well. So, you know, like, stuff like that. When you looked at Chelsea's bench comparable to ours, ours, we could barely sub on any players. 
Chelsea, you know, that their thing was mad who they had on the bench. You know, one thing we could do though, we had we had one substitution that that was very, very like straight like swap when it comes to talent wise. Tier, uh, Kieran Tierney and Zinchenko. What do you think about that straight swap? What do you think about those two as a straight swap uh, uh, when it comes to perform performance? And well, that's that's what, that's that's everything. the standard that you want. That's what I'm saying. So like 30 mil for a backup. But the thing is, is that they're gonna play equal time over the season. And like I said, like depending on the type of game, you know, you want a more attacking game, maybe play Zinni. More defensive game against a stronger team, play Tierney. Hmm. But you, you you need that. You need that in all positions. You know what I mean? It can't it can't just be one. But you know, that was obviously an area for us that we suffered in last year in left back. Hopefully they do the same in midfield because you know we had midfield crisis last year it was crazy. So no, you just gotta hope that the targets that they're going for are gonna bring in that depth for Thomas in case he gets an injury. Or even just to bring in depth in a game. Change the 100%. dynamic. Though. And just before, just before we go to the comments for, for, for more questions, guys, put in your questions in the comment section right now as we are still live and we, we're going to be going through some of your questions for the back end of the show. But Gakpo is the last, uh, one of the last updates. What do you think is going to happen? Do you think Gakpo is, is going to move to Arsenal? Because some people are saying Gakpo... I saw United were linked, weren't they? I, I seen a I seen a thing about Gakpo and uh, some guy that I seen he made a really good case on why Gakpo to Arsenal doesn't make sense, and I I watched that video and I said to myself you know what he is right Gakpo to Arsenal might not be the best thing. This might not be the best. Uh, the, it, might, it might not be the best thing for us because what, when I watched his video and I took in what he was saying he was making a lot of value and PSV. Let me let me show you. He broke it down for like two minutes, uh, where he broke down everything about this whole Gakpo thing, and he was telling me how. It, tell me if you can hear what he's saying. Um, I'm gonna just put this up. This was a good video. I thought this was really good video to watch. So just check this out, Gakpo. Right? Tell me what you think. The links between Arsenal and PSV winger Cody Gakpo seem to not be going away. Would this move make any sense? Let's take a look. Take a look first at my template for players in his position. You can see that Gakpo scored a lot of goals, registered a lot of assists. In fact, 12 of each this past season in, in the Eredivisie. He also so, takes a lot of shots eight. and does do a good job of keeping them on target. While Gakpo does do a good job dribbling and has a high success rate, one thing I think that would concern me is his close control. And that comes both from the radar where you can see his dispossessed numbers and his poor touches, which is akin to a first touch, are very high. As well as from watching his games because he's not necessarily the type who's going to win a lot of one-on-ones with the ball. Gakpo is a great player and one who I followed for a long time, but one of the reasons I do question the fit at this particular time. Do you see that heat map? Left side only. What do you mean, just the way he runs? It's just only left side, so mm. he won't be able to cover Saka at all. It won't benefit us in the long run on what we're actually trying to look at when we look at the squad depth issues. Time is his natural position, which to me is left wing and, and even more specifically left inside forward. It seems very likely to me that if Mikel Arteta is looking to invert his fullbacks, he might want his wingers to be able to hold the width. That's not something that Gakpo has done a lot at PSV, as you can see by the above. He does move inside as he gets closer to the goal. Many have wondered aloud whether Gakpo could be an eventual center forward conversion because of his size at 6'2". I do think he's got the power to be able to do that, but I think it would take some time and he wouldn't contribute there right away. In games where I've seen him move center forward, usually later in the game after substitutions, he has looked a little lost and like he doesn't quite know what he's doing. And he does not tend to play a lot with his back to the goal. An obvious strength for Gakpo is his passing. He's great at one-two combinations and always seems to put just the right touch on a cross, which is part of the reason why he has so many assists. He also does take free kicks and corners. After all this, do you think when he's going to say? After all this, do you think he's going to say he likes Gakpo or he doesn't? But I don't know. He's just he's just talking stats. That's all he's doing. Listen to the end. Really natural fit, especially considering he might cost forty million. Do you think it's his best move, and that does limit his ability to play on the right? For all these reasons, it's hard to see a really natural fit, especially considering he might cost 40 million pounds. I don't know if it's the right move for right now. So after all that, his main thing was that he he doesn't think he's a good fit because he's, he can't play on the right. And this is why yeah. we, this is why we need him on the right. This is a death chart. 
if you can see, we have Martinelli, ESR, and Marquinhos potentially could play on that side. We have Marquinhos, Saka, Pepe, Nelson that can play on this side. Which side is actually strength enough? Like this side is, is weaker than the left, uh, than the right, but the right is only really Saka. The rest of them are not. Mm, they're, they're questionable, right? Eddie and Ketia and Jesus, that's good. Midfield, I would say we need one more midfielder on this side, so potentially Tillemans. Um, and I would say we need a DM also, but hey, what are you going to do? Um, right back, I would get another right back. You know what? Left center back is actually not that good of a strength with holding as the backup. Potentially long term, we need but to. But isn't, isn't that trusty guy left center back? Yeah, he is. Maybe he can maybe he can play in that position eventually for us because he's doing well in Birmingham City. But yeah, so I presume good. that you know we're just gonna hold on to holding for another year and then trust he will take that that back up. Yeah, but this is the squad depth. This is the squad depth for our uh, next season. Uh going into the season, when you see this, do you think this is enough? I don't think it is. No, I've said to you it's not enough, no, for sure. But I think you know, with the right back situation. Um, I would probably put that as a third priority right now because Tommy Yasu is coming back. Um, you do have White as an option, and Cedric still does a decent job for a couple of games, but not and obviously a long to, term. We need to focus on the left, uh, so, I mean, the, the, the goalkeeper situation. Well, look, I wouldn't have sold Leno, so you know my thoughts. on that. I don't think this Turner guy looks any good from what I've seen. Um he looked shaky before he came. I saw a few videos and stuff of some saves. And I think like watching his videos in training, his distribution seems very slow and unnatural. I don't think he's going to suit like an English game. Okay. So this is the position Arsenal is going to address. The right wing and the midfield. If we then get a midfielder, you would you be well, Vieira, to... the Vieira can play as a winger as well, supposedly. But they don't have him in that section. I still think, yeah, we, we need someone for the the Xhaka cover. Okay. So we need an upgrade on Xhaka. We needed her for seven years. So uh, Chelsea's the name. I haven't seen you there in a while. How are you doing? She's an Arsenal fan, uh, but her name's Chelsea. It, yeah, that's ironic. I love it. Uh, uh, I mean, Smith Rowe over Odegaard. Odegaard. Really? I would have loved to have seen Smith Rowe come in last week. Yeah, Odegaard had a shocker. Yeah, Smith, uh, Odegaard had a bad game, but uh, Smith Rowe's not fully fit yet. So we're gonna have to wait and see. I can't wait for him to come back. I'm. We have Walter White uh, as well. As well, <laughs> I know his last name is not Walter White. Uh, I think it's Russell Walter, or, or that's his name, right? Russell Walter. Who? Walter. What's his name? The center back, the youth academy center back that we took on loan. Don't know. No, not on loan. That we took the thing. Uh, Diaby said he's staying. When did Diaby say he's staying? I've never seen an article where Diaby said he's staying. Generally. I've not seen that before. What do you think about the Abamyang thing? What's the Abamyang thing? Have you seen it? The Abamyang thing? Abamyang to Chelsea? Oh, I've seen the Abamyang to Chelsea. Yeah, I hope it's not true. I wouldn't like that. Do you, do you think that would ever happen? Well, I don't know if it's going to happen because it doesn't look like Barcelona can register any players. I felt like the Abamyang to Chelsea situation was like ironic because all or nothing was coming out the same night. What do you think? Do you think those two had anything to do with each other? Well, look, they need a striker. Barcelona probably want to clear their books. You know, they signed Lewandowski. If Barcelona so... get a fee, we're absolute idiots. Well, they will get a fee because he's a free transfer. No, but how? What they won't? And Chelsea get have got money, so. You think Chelsea are going to pay for uh, Bamiang? Well, it makes sense. He's on a free contract, so he's signed to Barcelona. Barcelona need money as well, so, and Chelsea have a lot of it. They're overpaying for everything, even if Chelsea, they pay twenty. Chelsea million. might get Young, but do you, if they get if Chelsea give money to Barcelona to Pierre for Pierre Mkhitaryan, we are the biggest mugs because we gave Barcelona a player for free. We paid out his wages, paid seven million, and these guys put him on put him on a one year deal and ended up selling him for more money than we sold him for when he was our club captain. It's crazy. I've I've always said it. We got the worst like people in charge of selling. It's disgusting what our players sell for. If these guys get money for a Bamiyang, I'm gonna be livid. I don't care about the money. I just don't. I just don't want him to go to Chelsea. I'm just because he'll score goals. He's gonna score a lot of goals. He's not no, a dead he's player. Gonna absolutely flop at Chelsea. No, I don't think so. He's gonna absolutely flop at Chelsea. 
It's going to yeah. be an inside job. He's going to, he has the Arsenal uh, tattoo on his arm. You can't forget that. Well, that's why I think he won't go, but who knows? Sesk went there. Yeah, but Sesk doesn't have an Arsenal tattoo on his arm. He's got Arsenal in his heart. That's what matters. Yeah, okay. Um, 1 0 Arsenal. What is that? What is he talking about? Bro, okay, so people, people, this is the question portion of the show. Some people saying they love the Luda Gunner. Uh, that's my guy, too. The Luda Gunner is a cool guy. Um, uh, Guedes, we already spoke about Guedes. Where are West Ham finishing, in your opinion? I think six is uh, between six or seven. What do you think? Yeah, I, I had them down as sixth this year. I think they'll finish higher than United. Okay, Arsenal's best team in the world. I don't think so. Um, which team is better, West Ham or Arsenal? Arsenal. Arsenal. Um, yeah. What, but West Ham have a West Ham have a great starting team. I think they've got a fantastic yeah. team. That Skamaka Ars- is going to do really well. Arsenal's best team. City are closer to Arsenal. What? Arsenal's best eleven is closer to City than Liverpool. What? No. What are you talking about? Um, Man City, Liverpool, Tottenham, Chelsea are maybe even United. Ain't seeing them yet. Are, oh, they're talking about Crystal Palace. Yeah, Crystal Palace is going to be a tough oh. game for everybody. For I think so as well. People people were disregarding it like Palace was like a pushover team. They're they're a great squad. They coach well. They're going to take points off some big teams, and you know, look at look at Liverpool last night. Fabrizio so Romano just reported that Arsenal is interested in Frankie Dion. What? That's not true. Nah, that's fake. It's not true. If that was true, that would be the title of the video, guys. <laughs> Let's be honest. Uh, you you got to. Would you, you even want Frankie? Would you take Frankie De Jong right now? I think Frankie De Jong would be way out, way out of our, our league. We won't be able to pay his wages. Kula Bali w- was class today. No, he wasn't. He got injured and Saliba came. Saliba won man of the match in his first debut. Kula Bali couldn't last 75 minutes. Yeah, I don't understand why the Kula Bali stuff's getting so much gas. Like he's the best center back in the league. It's mad. We're going uh, to finish it today. You need two parties. Should, uh, wait, you need uh, two parties. Should, uh, what? You can't get two Partey's. The best player in Arsenal are Tini and Partey. I don't think Tierney is the best player at Arsenal. I think he's the best. He's definitely up I there. I think Thomas Partey is the best player at Arsenal. Second best is Saka. Mm. Third, Odegaard. Jesus is fourth right now. But it, nah, can, it, could, it could change. Jesus, think, Jesus is above Odegaard. Opinions change all the time. Romero is clear of every London center back. That is absolute cap. Uh, yeah, okay. Cap. Thiago Silva, Koulibaly, Saliba, Gabriel, all better than him. They're all better than him. Um, Koulibaly is better than all your defenders. Stop with the delusional hype. Koulibaly, Koulibaly, listen, Koulibaly is better than all our center backs over the last couple of years. Let's see how he does at Chelsea and in the Premier League for the next couple of years. We'll see. We'll see how, how old is Koulibaly? Is he like 29, 30? 31. 31. Fucking buying dinosaurs over there. Yeah, they, they, that's what they do. Extinct players. But it gets them trophies, so they don't care. Um, best player at Arsenal are Tierney and Pate. Oh, Spurs fan agrees with you. Spurs fan agrees with you there. Um, I don't think there's too much more, man. Is there anything else that, that we missed? The Arsenal stuff today has been uh, a little bit quiet. Let me just let me just mention some things. So have you heard about the Saliba hunger thing? Uh, Patrice ever said, oh, Saliba has hunger. He's very hungry. He's ready. That's my Patrice ever uh, accent. It was like, let me read what he said, and let me put it in his accent. Um, Patrice Evra, when, when, oh, did you hear Gary Neville? I'm massively impressed. I'm right. I'm massively impressed by uh, by William Saliba. He reminds me of a young Rio Ferdinand. Did he say that? Yeah. I, I hate listening to those guys. They fucking talk shit, man. What about this? Um, license to license to will. William Saliba is hungry, and he had his chance. Saliba, I, I've waited a long time, and my first ever game. I'm so happy. He was very happy to play his first game, and his English is really good. I thought he, I thought maybe he didn't, he didn't speak English well, but he speaks very good English. A lot of a lot of French people learn English in school, man. Yeah, um, Patrice Evra said his thing. You got some other stuff going on. Yo, did you see that weird thing about Jake Paul? Jake Paul made his predictions for the Premier League weekend. <laughs> Oh my god, what did he do? 
He put Arsenal and Chelsea in the Europa League spots. He had Tottenham and Manchester United finishing third and fourth. Man City to win the league. Uh, no, Man Listen, City. Man City that to guy come, is a fucking Man idiot. City I to hate him. Second, and Liverpool to win the league. Jake Paul, as a Premier League fan, is weird because his tweets are now making websites as predictions. That's ridiculous. Who's better, William Saliba or Fofana? They're both top class center backs. Saliba's, Saliba's yeah. Saliba, even when they were at um, uh, San Etienne or whatever, he was um, better as well. Yeah, no, Saliba's better. One Arsenal fan said Saliba is the best center back in the Premier League. Yeah, that was probably me. Someone <laughs> said, someone said, um, is, is that the GOAT? What is that? What emoji is that? I've never seen that before. Jake Paul's the dick. I presume it's like a cucumber or an eggplant. Oh, yeah. Cucumber. Okay. Um, I think Neves means. Madison would be better than Odegaard and Xhaka. He got man of the match, by the way. Who? Saliba. Saliba. Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. And so this guy here, I think Neves and Madison would be better than Odegaard and Xhaka. You want me to show you some interesting I'm stats? not going to question the Neves and Xhaka thing. That's yeah, 100% true. This is, uh, this, is, this is cool. This is cool. This is a cool stat. So this is Arsenal versus Crystal Palace 2-0. You can see the passing statistics. You can see the possession statistics. You can see the shots on target and off target were the exact same, right? Cards, fouls, touches. You can see where we made the touches, inside the box, offsides, corners. And then finally, uh, block shots and crosses. Pretty cool. I like. Where is this from? Uh, the Sun. Huh. I see. I seen this on the sun, but no one really likes them, so I don't mention their name much. But yeah, Zaha to Arsenal, Capo, hundred percent. Hell no. Hell no. Are you serious? One hundred percent. Hell no. One hundred. I would take him, bro. You know, can't oh. beat the, the man. The man. The man's. Uh, the man's Pepe two point oh. Uh, uh, nah, oh, chat. No, no finishing. He. We. We don't need that. He would be good experience to bring on. Um. Like instead of Saka or something like off the bench. What about this? 29. What about this? Somebody said um, Arsenal do not possess the character to clinch a top four spot last season, according to pa uh, Patrice Ebra. But personally, this season, they definitely look like they're going to be fighting a lot harder. And I'm not because I'm a Manchester United fan, but they lack the character last season. This season, they definitely do have it. Who's this? Are this they saying that about Arsenal? I. Uh, one second, Manchester United legend able to let me let me get let me see what it says. Robot's gonna read it, okay? Just bear with me. Okay. And the Man United legend doubts the Gunners will be able to get into the final quartet this time around. Also, he said to Stadium Astro, "Personally, I knew they would not finish in the top four, not because I'm a Manchester United fan, but because they lack character. This year, if they don't finish in the top four again." People will say it is not a successful season. He didn't say anything. We don't know. Basically, he's saying we still lack we still lack character. Patrice but who's Ebra, saying that? Who's Patrice saying that? Ebra, he just chat shit. Ah, Patrice Owen needs to shut the fuck up, man. Patrice Ever just chat shit. Oh. He, he when's he gonna come out and talk actual shit about his club? His club is in so much more disarray than what ours is right now. And he wants to come and make comments about it. I mean, he's got to worry about it. from Sky Sports because he, because he says stuff like he wants to punch people. He's an idiot. Remember? Yeah, he's a waste man. Anyways, that's it for today, ladies and gentlemen. The Kitty G on EGTV. Hope you guys enjoyed it. We, we went into, we got involved into everything. Let's see what the poll results was. 77% um, said Musa Diaby. 85, 87 votes. 75% said Musa Diaby. What a I'm result. I'm all about Diaby, yeah. Yeah, man, everyone loves Diaby. But yeah, that was it for today. I don't think there's anything else to talk about. The Lucas Torreira to 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 um to Galatasaray is going to be the main story that everyone's going to talk about tomorrow. We already beat them to the punch. So make sure you do subscribe, you do like the video, and of course, you can find Dylan's channel also in the the description. So please do go get, give him a follow. Hopefully, you guys are goddamn well. And yeah. Uh, like the stream, people. What is Egal doing here? St starting up a channel. Notice YouTube is hard. 6K subs in two months. I got like 6K subs in two months. Bro, that is amazing. Yeah, I'm just having a look at his... I'm looking at his page. It's all YouTube shorts and stuff, yeah. That is amazing. 6K subs in two months. That is That's massive, amazing, bro, bro. yeah. Huge, Keep yeah. doing what you're doing, man. I love to see it. YouTube shorts are amazing, but at the same time, 
I can't do only YouTube shorts because I do long form videos. But yeah, you guys have yourselves a great day. Chelsea, love and respect. I haven't had I haven't seen you on a stream in a while. I I, I hope you're well. But yeah, I'm gonna be bringing back later streams, but not this late. Probably like 10 o'clock ish. But yeah, have a good one, guys. I'm out. Bless.